traveling to Costa Rica on a fishing trip of a lifetime. Wait a minute. How does a guy from Minnesota end up on a saltwater sportsman adventure? One word. Passion. When I hooked my first fish in the land of 10,000 lakes, I was hooked on fishing. And when two passions intersect in the same location, well that's where dreams are made. Playing hockey in Minnesota brought me to Pensacola, and fishing in Pensacola provided opportunities I never would have imagined. You guys just caught a great white. Oh my gosh. From deckhand to captain to Big John shark fishing adventures and increased social media attention, a connection was made with Saltwater Sportsman. Saltwater Sportsman is providing unimaginable, state-of-the-art fishing experiences for our creator team. And I am so thankful to be a part of this Saltwater Sportsman adventure. There were three creators on this adventure to Crocodile Bay. I was teamed up with Ryan Morey, Elias V Fishing, included with Elias was his wife Meg. Also along with us was Phil Hollinsworth, video producer with Saltwater Sportsman, and Nate Matthews, editor-in-chief of Saltwater Sportsman. Watch your head? More like watch your torso. I knew going into this trip, the only thing that was not going to be fun was the lack of leg room on the plane rides. And on this flight, from San Jose to Crocodile Bay, this was the smallest plane I had ever seen, much less been on. There was zero leg room. But honestly, it was pretty fun. Going up over the mountains, the views were insane, but the ride was like being on an amusement ride on a roller coaster, up and downs. It was quite the adrenaline rush. There's no other word to explain Crocodile Bay besides raw. We were literally in the middle of the jungle. This resort was built and carved through the jungle. This will do. <laughs> it was like staying at an Airbnb on steroids. Full living room, full kitchen, outdoor patio, huge bedrooms. We had an itinerary of what we wanted for food, drinks, on the boat every day. Check the boxes and everything that we wanted was on the boat for us drinks in the coolers, food in our own Tupperware. This was basically couples retreat without the couples part and without the people. I can't stand large crowds. And this was like the perfect situation. Private, remote, destination, all fishing. I could not wait for day one. On our first day, we were fishing on a 25-foot Boston Whaler with Captain Adrian. John, yep. See the school over there? Yep. Gonna make it a smooth casting that way. Yeah. We started the morning in the bay catching live bait on Sabiki rigs. AJ, we were fishing over by the river mouth yesterday from the beach. You ever see saltwater crocs over there? <laughs> we made it. 
I don't know about you, but like this place is called Crocodile Bay and we just got dropped off where there's no people. I'm not complaining, but definitely looking. You ever see saltwater crocs over there? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Every day. Big ones. Yeah, big ones. They ever like come up to you and? Well, we don't we don't have like croc lab attacks or anything like that, but we see them we see them all the time, you know, in the in the beach. That's good. When we got out of the bay, we were trolling our live baits along the coastline. How long do I let it go for? Uh, about 50 feet. I was using a sinker on the bottom and Ryan was trolling on the top of the water column. And it didn't take very long to get hooked up on my first fish in Costa Rica. Yeah, you did that like a pro, John. Thanks, Ryan. <laughs> you're only being nice to me because your camera's on. That's very true. Yeah. What do we got here? What kind of critter does John have? It's heavy. Jack, maybe? Uh, maybe. African pompano. Beautiful, that's delicious fish. Cool. Is that your first African? That is my first African. Those things are delicious. It's like one of the best eating well, fish in the ocean. Well, Alright John, talk to us about your first fish in Costa Rica. Ah, uh, well I was just acting like a pro, trolling <laughs> it back there, felt a little tension, let the bail out, let him eat, set the hook, and reeled in this little guy. Beautiful fish. That's good for catch and cook. Yeah. Just put a little floor. You have to hold them so far out because you're on you're so big you make all the fish look tiny. <laughs> Johnny boy is one for one. Ryan is zero for zero. Look at that view. Oh that's sweet. Oh, oh no. Did it completely wrong, John? Oh, you called. Oh. Maybe no. Maybe. Yeah, you got it. Got one? Yeah. It's a big bait, remember? Well, it's a little fish. Maybe it's a bait. I don't know. I didn't. Yeah, it's a fish. Yeah, it's. It's not pulling too much drag yet. Try not to reel against the drag. Yes. Oh yeah, roosters! Hey, there's some right following it. Yeah, here they are. There he goes. Hey, hey, hey! Pay attention. <laughs> Look at them all. Bring them up. Watch the motor. It's over here. Put that rod tip in the water. Put the rod tip in the water. Get it out from under your shoulders. You don't want that line to
There we go. What? Go. He's, he's got it. Alright, you work on getting him unhooked and we gotta get him back here. Alright. Pretty fragile. They got teeth? No, no, no teeth. Careful, no teeth. Little, it's a rooster, man. Little guy, but sweet looking fish. Coolest fish I've ever caught. Small, but sweet. Gotta get him back. Yep. Gorgeous fish. Hi, buddy. In the boat. Beautiful. That's cool. You brought the whole school in. Mine was bigger. Oh, yeah. And oh. it looks small, though. I'm sure. Oh, thanks. I was looking for that before. Cool. Thank you. Phil, you better have the camera rolling when I fall overboard here. Views on this trip definitely didn't disappoint. I've never seen turquoise water this clear before. John, talk to us. What's going on, man? Get some energy in there, dude. I'm really hoping I don't get stuck in that right there. Okay, all right. Just watch what you're doing. <laughs> Good guys on deck over here. Running away from the boat. Thank you. Throw it up before my eyes. Hey, there it is. What do you got? Looks kind of white. Ripping. Jack, exactly what you've been looking for. Open the bail. Oh, the best shark bait in the world. This is the best shark bait right here. I get ripped off all the time buying these. And it absolutely kills me to release this right now. Because this is like throwing a $50 bill into the water. But $50? Healthy, healthy catch and release. Dude, you're getting shaken down. Absolutely shaken down. There were a lot of firsts for me on this trip to Costa Rica. On day one, I caught my first rooster and my first African pompano. And the views on this trip definitely didn't disappoint. I've never seen more beautiful scenery in my life. It almost looked fake. After an awesome first day, we headed back in and headed back to Crocodile Bay Resort. And the food at this place was unbelievable. Pajaritas, which is literally like orange wine. Um, and then also, they're doing like a platter style meats tonight. They got all sorts of different types of meats that they brought out. I don't even know where to start, but we're all going to dig in. I do. <laughs> <laughs> and every night, we toasted with a tropical Costa Rican shot. Here, here's to not throwing up tomorrow. Excellent. <laughs> Definitely going to throw up tomorrow. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Some of us were able to handle it a little better than others. After Ryan finished releasing his breakfast, we were ready to start fishing. Today we were switching up our fishing strategy and we were targeting big game pelagic fish. So we needed a bigger boat. We were on a striker boat captained by Charlie and first mate Alex and we were going way offshore today. Alex was debriefing me on what to do if we were to have a marlin or a sailfish come up in our spread. But before he could get done explaining what to do, we were hooked up. Yep. 
Yeah, he's ripping. Oh. Huge. Oh, there's two. There's two. Right, right, right. He's on. He's on. Okay, there's another side. There you go. Hey, come on here. See yours? Yeah, that was crazy. Beautiful fish. Grab his bill. Around it, get in there. Tell me about your sale, John. Coolest fights ever. Doubled up. First sailfish. First sailfish I've ever seen. Didn't have a belt on. Definitely gonna have some marks on the groin from that. But unreal fish. So cool to be able to have hands on with this. Keep it in the water. Boats moving. Keeping water through its gills. And I'm gonna release my first sailfish here. Let me get. This guy, this guy is giant, so he makes all the sailfish <laughs> fall. But I think it's wonderful first sailfish. Unreal. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome. Yeah, he, you, you, you have to push him in the water. Yeah. <laughs> that was right. so cool. Dude, that was a big fish. That was, that was awesome. awesome. Big fish. My adrenaline's still pumping. Right? After doubling up on sailfish with Ryan, we headed back inshore to do some inshore fishing. Big John's got a big fish. What's going on, dude? 
Right in the groin. <laughs> I make fun of people that have those fighting belts, but right now. What's that? <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, there he goes. There you go. Let's fight, Jack. Because the gripper is giving up right now. There he is. That's a shark. Oh, hammerhead shark. <laughs> oh. Look at you catching a scalloped hammerhead in uh, Costa Rica. Beautiful shark. Look, John. Look at that. This thing kicked my butt and it's only three foot. <laughs> Happy Shark Week. Bye, buddy. Here he goes. Right down. You, you can't escape the sharks even in different countries. I can't. Good That's work, man. Catching a shark from the boat is literally the hardest thing. That was only three foot. Had that been from the beach, I wouldn't even have known it was on my line. But when you're supporting the weight of the fish underneath you, it's like reeling in a coke machine that sees the boat and then dives right back down. So reeling a six foot shark from the boat could take an hour and a half to two hours. From the beach, it's gonna take us 25 minutes max. That was not six foot, that was like three and a half foot. And that worked me as much as that sailfish did. Whew. Phil had a hiccup on the last saltwater sportsman trip in Panama as he crashed his drone into a mountain. Phil had been flying his drone throughout this trip and at the end of day number two, Ryan was hooked up with a nice rooster fish and Phil's battery on his drone was draining and he needed to land it immediately. And unfortunately for me, Phil's horrific piloting skills landed his drone straight into my kneecap. Oh, you okay? got a drone right to the leg. Oh, oh, God. God. Get, that, get that fish in. <laughs> you, <laughs> Phil. Dude, I'm, you're right, dude. Dude, I'm sorry. I totally had it. It's okay. <laughs> you're right, dude. Yeah, I'm fine. Oh, my God. <laughs> sorry about that. That was good for the last, like, minute and a half. Thanks, Phil. From the moment that Ryan put two and two together that this was my first sailfish, he was so persistent and consistent that I get pushed off the dock. You have to push him in the water. <laughs> I probably showed my cards early on because I couldn't stop talking about saltwater crocodiles after the first night, and I wanted absolutely nothing to do getting pushed off in the water. In hockey, when I won my first professional hockey game, during a radio interview, I had teammates come up behind me with a shaving cream pie and pie me in the face. <laughs> it was kind of like, welcome to the fraternity. The cool thing with that was I had no idea it was coming. With this, I had to wait all day, and I tried as much as I could to keep my mouth shut, hoping that Ryan would forget about it and I wouldn't have to get pushed off. I even used Phil's hiccup with flying his drone into my knee, trying to get an excuse to not get pushed in the water. I don't have to get pushed in the water now. Yeah, you do. I get a pass. I'm, yeah, not, I'm not getting flesh hitting bacteria. Yeah. What happens when a drone flies into a giant knee? <laughs> but there was no way around this. I was getting dunked no matter what. Ready. This is because he got his first selfish at Crocodile Bay. One, two, three, go. <laughs> Three, go! I think Big John would scare any crocodile. This trip to Crocodile Bay has truly been a trip of a lifetime. If you want a chance to win a trip to Crocodile Bay, make sure to check out the description below. 
Or, if you're watching on TV, you can scan the QR code on the screen. This is not something you want to miss out on. And by checking out the description, you can have a chance to win a trip and have the same experience I have too. On day three, we were back with Captain Charlie and First Mate Alex. Our mission for day three was go big or go home. If anyone knows there's no guarantee with fishing, it's me. I wish I could promise any client of mine who books a trip with me a shark or a fish of a lifetime. But that's why I don't. And that's why it's called fishing, not catching. After trolling for several hours and casting poppers trying to get the yellowfin tuna to bite, we headed in to salvage our day. We spent the last hour of our trip bottom fishing live baits, and it didn't disappoint. John is on again. What you doing over here? What's your secret sauce? Ooh, Woo. John's really taking his time with this one, guys. I don't know what he's doing over here. I think it's because he's getting sweaty. John's getting some decent fish right now. Woo! That's a good one, dude. These things have teeth. Sorry? No teeth, right? No teeth. You can look Do the same thing that we did with the other one, though. Hand in the gill. Hide those fingers. And then hide, yeah, hide that, too. What do you think, man? Sick. It's like twice the size of your last AP. And look, you're, this one doesn't have the tracers like yeah, your other cool. one did. No, we're okay. You want us to release? Captain, or? you want to or you want to release uh, no. it? You can release it. Okay, hold yeah. on. Let me get this yeah. in the water. Deshaun. Just like that. We literally just cut the clip from the last one, but John just now hooked up on the bottom. There you go. Hey. Look at that. That's cool. Well snapper. Come on. Hide those fingers as much as you can. What you got, John? I got a my first mullet snapper. It's a good one. Is that what it's called? Yep, it's a mullet snapper. Half mullet, mullet snapper. half snapper. All awesome. Third one, second one of the day. Look at that thing. I don't know where that's from. Old Warwick. Uh, that's awesome, man. 